A very good morning to everyone. We welcome each one of you to the first uh, virtual debate competition of Tetsu College organized by uh, Oratory Club. On the topic, online education during the COVID-19 COVID pandemic is justified. The term COVID-19 uh, sounds very cliche these days. However, we do know that this is the greatest and the biggest reality that we are dealing with. COVID-19 pandemic led to the abrupt closure of the educational institutions and which revolutionized the uh, educational world. So the notion of online education and adapting to the online education uh, <clears throat> has taken up to um, normalize the situation and it is really applauded for its merits. However, it is not in the absence of criticism due to various reasons such as inaccessibility or unaffordable uh, condition of some various groups in the society. With the emergence of um, the new academic session, the question has resurfaced, should we go, should we continue online education to provide safety to all or should we come back to the traditional online uh, uh, traditional classroom approach so today <clears throat> with this platform let us all tune in to know what our debaters have to say about it over to you miss nisha Good morning, everyone. Morning, everyone. Morning, everyone. Morning, everyone. Hello. Um, I hope I'm audible. Yes, yes, audible, audible. I welcome, uh, I welcome everyone to the first virtual debate competition. And uh, here I'll just uh, uh, quickly remind about the rules. Although we follow the conventional rules, which, which, uh, which are uh, there. Uh, I'm sorry because of the network problem. There is. Uh, it, please give me a moment. I'm sorry. Yes. Hello. Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay, fine. Oh, yes. So quickly, we'll just have a look uh, on the rules of the debate. Although, like, we are going to follow the rules which are prevalent in debate communication, but since it's a virtual platform, there is going to be some difference. So there. Um, there will be only one round in which the presenter or the participants, they will be presenting their speech. They will be justifying either for the motion or against the motion. Then the, uh, then the time duration given to each speaker is four minutes. Uh, after, every, after three minutes, they will be notified and uh, mm -hmm. They will be uh, notified to wind up their argument. And then there are certain rules that the participants need to be aware of. They must not read their argument. And then uh, regarding the use of language, regarding the use of words 
or the expression, they must maintain the balance of the virtual platform. And moreover, this ensures the words or actions which are not welcoming, they will not be tolerated. They may even be to the next uh, point as well. So all the participants need to be aware of that. And then in any case of dispute, the matter shall be referred to the honorable panel judges whose decision shall be final and binding. Besides this, there is one more rule. Um, uh, which is specific to our virtual debate, and that is regarding the question and the round. Um, here, uh, all the participants, they are supposed to present their argument first. They are supposed to present first. The question and the round will take place later, uh, uh, towards the end of the event. Uh, here, my request is to the audience also, all those who have joined us for the first virtual debate competition. If anyone from the audience, they do have a question from the participant, then they can kindly please or type it in the chat box. And then later, and direct your question to the particular person so that later it doesn't lead to any confusion. So uh, after the presentation of the participants, the question will be picked up and the participants will be asked to uh, answer those queries or answer those questions. Thank you. Ms. Nisha? Hello. Yes. Yes. Um, Next. Okay, yes. Um, for today's event, uh, we would like to introduce our uh, honorable judges. For, um, for today, the honorable judges are Dr. Hewasa, Dr. Elika, and Ms. Kahor. We welcome you to the first virtual debate competition. Thank you. The speakers of our today's debate. We have eight in total, and for the motion team, we have Choman Lee Sangtam, <clears throat> MA Political Science, second semester. Is they delay Ngya becomes first semester. Matsa Hamsoi, MA second semester, English. Ning Tao Lung, Gang Mai, BBA fourth semester. Ben the, uh, and for the team of against the motion, we have Bendang Jungla, BA Psychology, first semester. Dile Kat, BA Sociology, fourth semester. Hairo Saab, BA Economics, fourth semester. Zosayang B. Kemrai, BA History, six semesters. These are the enthusiastic candidates from our Tetsu College to represent and uh, talk about their views and opinions on the topic. So over to you, Ms. Nisha. And once again, um, before we start with our next round, that is presentation round, um, I've already uh, uh, I've already discussed about the rules and the flow of the debate. So, um, regarding question and answer round, once more, I'm just remind uh, I'm just reminding to everyone. In case you do have any question, even the participants, please use the chat box and feel free to uh, write down your 
question in the chat box and then later after the presentation of all the participants the questions will be picked up and answered by the respective person it is directed to over to miss baby thank you now i invite all the participants to uh, uh, speak one by one uh, i invite chomang lee sangtam from the team of motion uh, MA Political Science second semester, followed by the team of Against the Motion by Bendang Tunga Ao. You may take your time. And I will be the timekeeper. Uh, hello, everyone. Good morning, first of all. Uh, today, I'll be speaking in favor of motion on the topic online education during. COVID-19 pandemic. Why I choose us in motion? Because I had been experienced through the five, year, five months of COVID-19 pandemic. Since I had joined in Tetsu College, there are many similarities between the COVID-19 pandemic online education that had been learned. And on this COVID-19 pandemic, the lockdown has been institutionalized the education, school, college, and universities have been shot to prevent spread virus over the Nagaland and all over India also. The education of online through the COVID-19 pandemic, it has been learned through the Zoom, Google, Hangout, and Microscope teams. Uh, today, the globally 1.2 billion children are out of the classroom. As a result, education has changed dramatically with extensive rise of e-learning. Uh, when we learn the on online education, it has been uh, some benefits to the students during pandemic. Uh, first of all, we learn students can develop their own routines. Uh, you know, there are some many pandemic into the formation of the online education with the students don't need to be attend in the classrooms either at and to till afternoon. It has been developed for to build our, ourselves into the realistic of the online class. Students can work on peace. Uh, some people of students around the world or around the Nagaland the challenges are stressful or might be taking them into all. With online school and colleges, the classes, students are able to choose how much time they devote class and assignments. Students can choose the environment where they study. So many distractions uh, might exist in a traditional classroom sitting with goal easily, whether a student needs complete silence or little bit of noise pride light or a soft light. A conveyor chair with pillows or simple stone, each individual online student can choose where perform their studies. Uh, students can study their patients through spirit of online education. Students to re-engage in the academic and become passionate. Uh, online education promotes lifelong learning. Online education can promote lifelong learning because most of the time we learn in a course the forgotten within two of the end of classes. And now we learn online education teachers you to, to be self-disciplined. Most of, most of us uh, in the doctors included put up the things we need to until the very last moment when it comes to education. Sometimes the lessons learned hard in form of poor performance and exam or assessment. Online education give you real world skills because through online education, we can complete the course. We will be able to include email and web processing technical skills. They give us definite advantage or some does not have the skills learning how to get information we internet opens up and performing the personal and professionals, we can find jobs online also. 
effective learning material sharing. When we look upon the effective learning material sharing, we have been experienced from our college that we had Google Classroom and the teachers are sharing the notes and we can study for uh, for exam and learn some good attempting of the good marks and monitoring students' activity. All the students' activities in the virtual class are recorded as well. For example, when the learning process begins and the teachers instruct them to read certain documents, the system will not whether they open the documents as per the instruction. Now, effective learning evolutions. Effective learning evolution, it has been taken uh, by the NBSC. It is launched last month. Uh, they have been taken throughout the vision. And the effectiveness of the evol learning evolutions, they're combining the true all over the Nagaland to give education to all over the Nagaland. Uh, all the students take part on it. Moreover, it has been emphasized on the education during the COVID-19 pandemic. And I totally favor, I totally in favor of the um, motions which had been taken throughout in the future tense. Thank you. Bendangju, you may take your time. Bendang Jung, you can put on your microphone and audio uh, and your camera. Bendang Jung, are you there? All right. With, with yeah, without uh, with waiting. Uh, uh, instead of waiting for Bendang, yeah, we can give time again. So I call upon Dile Kat to present from the team of against the motion. You may take your time. Hello, everyone. Without any further ado, education institutions were the first one to close the onset with the onset of COVID-19 cases in India, and students immediately signed up for the online classes to fulfill their daily learning. But the online classes brought a with a disadvantage to the students, with we, which I will be emphasizing upon. Under the shadow of COVID-19, life of millions of children have temporarily shrunk to just a home and the screen. In one fifty-nine countries worldwide less than half the population have access to the internet with that being said africa has a quarter cross have the less than a quarter for the populations has internet access there are 86 schools in nagaland total of 244 in 86 schools in dimapur total of 244 in nagaland and 61 colleges in nagaland. making it obvious that there are more uh, high school students and uh, classes A to 10 students in Dimapur, in Dimapur and Nagaland as well, which make it obvious that they does not hold any devices, which make a problem for the household, household to, which make it problem for the household to cooperate since 
because of this pandemic, everything is done work by home and sharing these devices make it a problem for the family situation. The online classes for the children take almost 30 to 40 minutes per subject in uh, plus five to six subjects which they have and this subject this time take almost half of the days of the days making it difficult for the parents to work mm. no issues which uh, even if the devi device even if there is not any issue about the device the greatest problem lies in the internet connection students in rural activity find it difficult to find a stable network uh, videos or audio called uh, through online for 30 to 40 minutes can be adjusted but how can continue for the repeated classes students in delhi and hyderabad uttar pradesh the central uh, place of the study if uh, classes are conducted half of the students will not be able to attend the classes because they have returned to their own respective places with uh, in villages or and more places where internet is not accessible. Given a global perspective, UNESCO said half of the total learner, sum of 80, uh, 826 million, which is 82.6 core students, do not have access to all devices. And for this three percent, 7.6 million or 7.6 cores have no internet at home. On 15 April, the United Nations Children Fund UNICEF, which is engaged in humanitarian act for young ones around the world, have stated that millions of children are at risk of harm as they, as they are more increasingly online during this lockdown, during this lockdown in the COVID-19 pandemic. According to this statement, the internet exposure to children at the risk of online sexual exploitation and grooming and and predators to to exploit the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, coming uh, back to Nagaland. Nagaland, within Nagaland, internet ex internet estimate is very low as Guwahati provides 35% to the eight northeast state. It is 8,600 villages yet to be covered with mobile or connectivity. 2,800 five villages in Arunachal Pradesh yet to be covered with internet, 2,508 in Assam, 528 in Manipur, 2,374 in Meghalaya, 252 in Mizoram, 134 in Mizoram, uh, 252 in Mizoram, 134 in Nagaland, 23 in Sikkim, and two in Tripura, and two in Tripura, making it very difficult for the students around the places or staying in villages these online classes few of the students have uh, few most of the students have been able to these online classes uh, those who are staying in urban areas or Dimapur Kohima but most of the schools which cannot provide these online classes uh, students have been lacking behind in this educational system some of the um, uh, measurements which people have taken instead of online classes are TV our TV shows all Nagaland schools and colleges provide channels from those channels to provide educational educa uh, educational to the students. Like Saint Mary High Secondary School, uh, examples like uh, Shepherd School and etc. And all they are providing education through YouTube or TV channel, which make it more easy easier for the people. Also, and those who those doesn't have this. Uh, kind of pleasures they can uh, freely come and have, you know, share with their neighbors or something else like that. But through this mobile phone, it's very difficult for uh, large numbers of people to have to communicate through, not only in these online courses, but also in, in uh, internet as well. Most of the people doesn't have internet connection or even if they have, they won't be able to assist, assist uh, they won't be able to get it for the whole duration of time like for 40 40 minutes each for each classes plus five subject or so and it will be very difficult for them to have connectivity online classes have been the first um, first remedies for this pandemic of education but secondly it is tv more than 90 percent of the countries in europe and countries asia uses television a means of delivering remote learning and 
hundred percent of country in South Asia. Thirdly, being thirdly being radio in the is the third most used platform by government. Firstly, being said is internet, and second is TV, and third is radio is the third most used platform to deliver education. Why schools are closed with sixty percent of one twenty seven reporting countries using this method. Nagaland schools have also provided with different ways, not only in uh, educational way, but uh, not only in internet online, but they are also using uh, apps such as WhatsApp and uh, messaging text or giving them assignment or giving them notes through the internet basis, which make it more easier because even if the internet doesn't work for that du for a particular duration of time, with the flow of time, the internet uh, uses can be extended mm -hmm. and this um, will be delay. Yes, this will exceed the time. You have oh, okay, thank you. This the will be the end of my talk. Thank you. I call upon is a is a delaying yeah. To take the time. Isai, are you there? Yes, you may take your time. Good morning, on uh, we can we cannot hear you your voice is breaking up uh is um your voice is breaking up so you may take some time more like wait for the network you know to come to normalcy uh, meanwhile i'll give time to matsa hamsoy from uh, the team of against emotion in place of izad meanwhile first of all i would like to wish our respected judges uh, two competitors and everyone that's present here at this very moment. Uh, I am Hassan Tsui from the MA English Department and I'll be speaking for the motion. Now, to carry on with the discussions that we were having, I would like to first highlight one point that I do not agree with, uh, with what, one main point that I do not agree with what my, comp my previous competitor has said, and that is she mentioned not only uh, that Nagaland is using not only online classes but also WhatsApp. And I would like to clarify this point that even WhatsApp, I think, is online. And without internet, I don't think we can even use WhatsApp. So that is also an online platform. Because online, according to the topic, online does not mean only the online platform such as Zoom or such as Google Classroom and all such things. But then it also comes with uh, apps such as WhatsApp, which which is which all comes under the online sector. And you were uh, my previous oppos uh, opposing party was also mentioning a lot about statistical numbers about seven point six crores and you know the such institutions and all. But here I'll give you a status. Uh, here I'll give you an example of a statistic. That is, what if the whole world was to stop online classes? You know, what would happen then? Education would be pushed back 10 to 20 years behind, and I don't think that is going to help anybody, especially especially in the current circumstances that we are facing. Now, doctors, as we can see, let's take statistics. If you take statistics, doctors are retiring at such a fast rate that we have not seen before, especially due to the fear of their lives. Now, doctors and all such other things are retiring, and you know, um, if online classes were to stop now, education would be pushed back, and we would be delayed in having newer doctors to take over the position of the older ones that have retired. And I don't think that is going to help anybody in any situation. And also, if we were to compare, if we were to bring up the lives of those people who are unable to avail the such resources and come to online classes, I think we should also take that as an encouragement to the people who can avail, who can avail such resources and who can, you know, use online classes to their advantage. They can be the ones to 
be well educated and they can, you know, be the ones to educate the ones who are not so in a favorable position during this climate crisis. But I think one half of the population has to continue to move forward for our country to move forward. And if both halves of the equation were to put a stand still, I don't think it is going to do justice. Instead, it's going to do more harm, especially coming to the current uh, pandemic that the whole world is facing. Because each and every country is trying to cope up with this and try, trying to, you know, uh, they're trying to they're trying their best to continue uh, education and they're trying their best to you know, overcome the situation in any way they can. And as, we, uh, as citizens of the 21st century, I, I believe we have always been talking about the digital world. And you know, it's always about digital world, but the digital world does not only mean Instagram, you know, or social media or YouTube and all such uh, things, but it also means to use what we have been given to the best of what it can uh, what we can have and um, if you don't use the resources that we're given right now i don't think it, do, it does justice to the ones who are not able to avail these resources instead it is more of a hypocrisy and mocking the ones who are not able to avail such resources as we have been given the resources and so we should continue to use it with the best of what can be received and we should use the education that we receive to help the ones that are not fortunate so Online education during the COVID-19 pandemic, I would say, is justified according to the end. That is why I stand for the motion, because a civilization cannot move forward if both halves of the equation continue to stay at a standstill. Thank you. Now I give time to Bendang Jun from the team against the motion. Bendang Jungla Al. All right. Um, Hi, Sap, you may take your time from the team against the motion. Hello? Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes, audible. Go ahead. Okay. Um, good, good morning to you all, and thank you so much, Oral. Territory Club, that's college for this opportunity. Um, now today we're discussing that online education during this pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic, is justified or not. Well, I stand in my case that uh, online education during the COVID-19 pandemic is not justified. So let me begin by uh, expressing what justified means. Now the Cambridge English Dictionary describes justified as having a good reason for something. I will be telling you why online education or on online classes is not a good reason as an alternative during this COVID-19 lockdown. Now, my first point is digital inequality. Now, it means that um, everyone does not have the means or they are not provided the opportunities to attend or even to hold these online classes. I want to categorize this digital inequality into two points my my first point is mm, social inequality which includes uh family which mainly deals with family background differences and now every, everyone is not rich in this world everyone has their own uh fam family economy so everyone does not have a stable uh family income and so um because of this, not everyone is able to buy smartphones, afford smartphones or laptops which are needed for online classes or for online education. Now, let me give some examples for, uh, to prove my point. Tripura men ends life after failing to buy smartphone for daughter's online class, reads a headline of Hindustan Times. Another, no smartphones for online classes, Punjab girl allegedly commits suicide, a headline from NDTV News. Now, unable to attend online classes, 14-year-old, I repeat, 14-year-old girl 
sets herself ablaze. News 18 Kerala. And another headline from Times of India reads, Unable to attend online classes, Hora girls kills herself. Now, in this case, a, a senior officer in charge of the investigation said, quoted, We have heard she was a good student. Now, these are cases where families were not able to provide or they were not able to afford smartphones or laptops, the necessary means for their children. So, uh, parents or the children, they committed suicide. They took their lives because they could not take the depression. And the last case, uh, we have seen that the senior officer quoted, we have heard that she was a good student. Now, the last girl was a good student, but she committed suicide because she could not attend the classes. The last second case where the girl set herself on a fire ablaze was a 14-year-old girl. Look, a 14-year-old girl taking her own life because she could not attend classes, because she could not uh, acquire the necessary means to attend those online education. This is what online education is doing to people across India. Now, my next uh, point is differences of schools. Now, schools in rural areas, especially in rural areas, are not equipped to hold or to um, give the opportunities to students for online education. Now, I tuitioned three students uh, while I was here, and out of which two students could not, did not have enough study materials, so I had to tuition them, and uh, their parents could, their schools did not provide the necessary uh, opportunities, so they were given, uh, they had to seek for other uh, alternatives. Now, even online class, uh, holding online classes have problems like low and irregular attendance, uh, lack of attention by students, poor internet connection, mm, overworked teachers, students' abusive behaviors, communication gap, and so on, among many others. We also have technological problems like um, we were holding meetings for this debate, but we could not have smooth meetings because of technological problems. And we, uh, there are also vocational institutions. Uh, which is a part of education that are not being able to hold online classes or even if they are holding online classes it is not effective enough because they they teach skill training and these skills cannot be obtained through online education they need practical um, practices we also have personal development which cannot be uh, developed through online classes but we need practical practices we need a social environment social physical environment where we need to develop these personal developments also uh my last point is increased screen time now this increased screen time uh, researchers have proved that um mental uh, this improved screen time causes mental health disturbances it affects the eyes and also it affects behavioral patterns and these are problems which are present even we even when uh, covid 19 pandemic lockdown did not happen. So all these problems are occurring because of this COVID-19 and also because of um, online education, online education, which is being uh, taken up as an alternative to replace regular classes. So I stand in my case that online education during the COVID-19 pandemic is not justified. Thank you. Thank you, Harissa. Now I give the time to Izaidi from the team against uh, for the motion. Izaidi Le Ngia. All right, she's still facing a problem with the network. Then we move on with Ning Taolung Geng Mei. You may take your time for the team for the motion. Hello, am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Go ahead. All right. Thank you. Uh, good morning, all. Respect the panel of judges, my worthy opponents, and the attendees. My name is Ning Taolung Geng Mei. Today I will be speaking for the motion. Point number one. To begin with, I would like to first focus on the word justified. For example, if the online education is only possible in Apple laptops, desktop, iPhone, if this was the case, that would have been unjustified. Why online education is justified is because the learning is not interrupted. 
even though the traditional education is interrupted and can't continue, this, it is the online education that the learning is continuing. For example, the British school in New Delhi is a 57-year-old educational institute, institution. The, the school moved to Microsoft Teams even before the COVID-19 lockdown. It enables its teachers and students to interact and collaborate in remote learning scenarios reported on Microsoft News Standard India. Point number two, learning is not limited to one educational way. There are about 30, 40, 50 students in a classroom. How can we expect all the students to learn in all the same way for all? This is just a Of course, all the students can use of learning. And that education, online education has justified the education system by providing the options to learn online. Point number three, transportation. The problem of the problem of transportation faced by the students is eliminated. If we calculate the transportation fares of one month, normally it comes from 1,000 to 2,000 rupees, and even more for those who live at this end. We should have used it to buy online courses. Since due to the pandemic, there are a lot of offers available, and in the future, there will be a lot of offers as different businesses are coming up. Point number four, availability of devices. The problem of lack of online devices unable to acquire by the students in the rural areas for that, the government has also tied up with the Doordarshan, which is a broadcasting television network, so the relation is not missed by the stu any student. Point number five, no shortage of teachers. Yeah, there are places in rural areas where shortage of teachers is a major issue and ultimately sacrifice the quality of education. But through online education, this issue can be eliminated. The government pledged 60,000 crores to provide digital devices, such as laptops, uh, tablets, computers, mobile, mobile phones and television to four crore students in the higher education in India by 2025 to 2026. At present, there are nearly 3.75 crore students enrolled in higher education institutions in the country, while the ministry plans to cover 1.5 uh, crore students in the first year, that is the next year, between 2021 to 22, which will be huge, huge, huge relief for students reported on July 2, 2020 by the Logical Indian. With such rapid development in online education, how can one say that it is not justified? Point number six, why go anywhere else? Institutions still limit the number of admissions as far as the capacity of the classroom. But I believe in the near future, this border will be eliminated where we don't have to rush for admissions and can do with admission, can take admissions with no limit and don't have to go anywhere else, but the options to learn from wherever we want. Let it be your home, access drop. With all these proven facts, I would like to conclude with my stance that I firmly believe that more than the issues, there are more benefits of online education. And yes, the online education during COVID-19 is justified. Thank you. Thank you, Ming Taolung. Now uh, we give time to Bendang Jungla, Team Against the Motion. If you are ready, yeah. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Good morning, everyone. My name is Bendang Jungla. Today I'll be speaking against the motion. Firstly, schools are a very important institution for an individual's development. Traditional way of education plays a very important role in providing proper education for all the students with equal opportunities. They also prepare the students for their future. Whereas online education only deals with personal achievements and also to get a certain degree within a limited time. The most important thing that makes a school strong and acceptable is because of the well-educated teachers, the teachers plays a very important role in the development of a student. A teacher can never be replaced by any means of computer, technology, or any kinds of machine. The teacher's top priorities are their student to ensure they learn. And if not, they come up with ideas and methods to make learning easier, efficient, and understandable for the students. Moreover, schools plays the role as a whole from moral lessons to textual knowledge also provide a better learning environment for the students. Better learning environment for the students. For example, co-curricular activities are held by the school. 
example like the debate essay competition and speech making are held by the school where the students put their learning into practice and improve and develop their themselves and also and whereas whereas online education has no such concern for the student as a whole it usually lacks in teacher student bonding no interaction among the students and teacher or friends no feedback besides online education is just a part of learning session where its main objectives are personal and could only cope up with limited students in spite of that it is not sure if the student have learned anything because it will usually lack in providing physical learning activities better teaching methods and also connection problems also 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 with regard to those students who has no access to online education are being neglected there are some students who are unable to join online classes to because of differences in their living standards those who are not able to purchase some of the impact of online education are also mentioned by one of our friends it is leading to student suicide and also disintegrate the students into two those who are able to join online classes are getting the opportunity to learn whereas some are not able to learn but a school is a place where all children are treated equally with love and care and they are provided with equal opportunities for all the students there are also schools for special children like the blind and the deaf children therefore education should be fair and given to all the students equally rather it should and rather it should build a strong youth with right education to all the students and create equality among all thank you thank you bendang jungla now we have last speaker from the team motion for the motion is a dilengia you may take your time Very good morning to you all. I am Izzy D. Uh, speaking for the motion. Um, online education during the COVID-19 pandemic is justified. The introduction of online education. The introduction of online education is only the wisest and the most effective steps taken by institutions to help students receive knowledge and to uh, secure our future. Um, I say it is justified. The online education provides flexibility where you can attend classes from anywhere, like also from the comforts of your home. It is also cost um, effective. You know, we do not have to pay for the hostel fees or for the transportation expenses or even for the uh, the pocket money or the lunch expenses. We can save it up. It saves the uh, parents' pocket a lot. Many say it is unfair for the people who cannot afford and may not be able to get a proper education uh, like the rest of the students. But let us take a look at the situation from another angle. If we say, uh, if they say it is unfair for the people um, who cannot afford it, um, then should we stop the entire online education for, uh, for even the people who can afford? Let us remember there are people students taking online classes with sincerity and if a person is from you know financially unstable background he or she can save the money as mentioned above and mm, buy a smartphone let us remember that afford there are also affordable smartphones like uh, the zolo era 4x which is just rupees 4299 and there are uh, there is also this 
Carbon K9 Smart Eco, which is only 3,299. Social distancing is uh, one of the main precautions of this COVID-19. And if uh, and meets all these regulations of social distancing, if we are to attend the educational institution, we may not be able to exercise this precaution with uh, safety. And it will be very tough because the students will be, uh, the virus will spread rapidly. And not only that, um, it can also lead to death. Uh, with all this, all these uh, possibilities can be ignored with online education by helping us secure our future. And not only that, we can also protect ourselves and uh, controlling the virus spread. Mm. Going down the history lane, we have also witnessed uh, this Black Death in 1347 uh, to 1351 for four years and also Spanish flu for like a year. If we say our current, um, current situation to last that long, should we keep our education on hold for that long and not like receive any education for like four years like the Black Death? So I say it is justified. The online education during the COVID-19 pandemic is justified. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Now I call upon the last speakers of uh, the debate today, uh, Josiane D. Kemrai from BA History 6th semester. You may take your time. Uh, good morning, everyone. Very I clear. Go ahead. OK, good morning, everyone. Uh, respected panel of judges fellow opponents and everyone present here today to observe this debate competition. I'm going to speak for against a motion that is on the topic of the online education is justified during the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So I would like to strongly disagree with this point because uh, see, we must not be selfish with regard to education because there are millions and millions of people who are not um, getting access to this online education. Uh, our opponent have mentioned about 1 billion students getting uh, education through online means. But however, there are 7.8 billion um, population in the world. And also one of the fellow opponents mentioned about half of the population getting education and half of the population not getting education. And those people getting education should educate the, uh, those people who are not getting it. So I would like to uh, talk on, uh, on that. That is, see, one... 1 billion people are getting education, but 7.8 billion, the total population is 7.8 billion. So that is not even half of the population. So what do you expect of, uh, of the more than half of the population, those who are not getting education? And also one of my fellow opponents, he mentioned about that uh, if we are getting online education and we're not tech taking it, then it's like mocking at those people who are not getting online education. But I would like to say that, hello, there is a right to education in India. We are a democratic country, isn't it? So see, uh, there is a right to education and every single person in this country has the right to uh, educate oneself. So why do we need to um, have online education only for not even half of the population of the country? And um, the solution this, to this is already also mentioned by my, my opin opponent, that is uh, through televisions and radios. Okay, so televisions and radios are not through online means, and that can be a useful one to, uh, to provide education to the people. So again, another uh, of my opponent, he mentioned about transportation fare and all that. However, I would like to say that for, uh, when we are uh, going with the uh, traditional way of education, but do you know that we need uh, we need to uh, we need we need to pay the internet package fare for every month, and uh, the online education it's something like see online whether it be traditional education or online education the main 
idea of it is to provide a proper education to the student and i believe that online education is not going to do that because even in the traditional way of education even after several um scoldings from their parents the students they don't do their homeworks they don't study for their test and what do you expect during this online education will they study for the will they study for this um uh, their will they do their homeworks or study for their test do you think uh and also i would like to state one example that i have seen in my own place that is uh, once i went for uh, to get the online education registration in one of the schools in my villages one of my one of the schools in my village and there one of the parent he came, she came up with a black and white mobile phone and she told that can i use whatsapp here see our parents um, parents in india most of whom are illiterate they do not know anything about technology and see if we provide technology to the students they are going to misuse it because uh during this is the time when children are gonna spoil their careers if there is no proper guidance and and if technology is provided to them then they are gonna uh they are gonna take advantage of it they are gonna take advantage of the thing that their parents does not that their parents does not know anything about the technology so this is my point and then see uh, another opponent he, she mentioned about uh, some smartphones which cost only rupees 4000 but there are also people who wants to educate their children and they only get money for their hand to mouth that means they get money only for um, they do the work and they hardly get to eat from that money so how do you expect those kind those people to earn rupees 4000 just for a smartphone so i would like to i'm not saying i would not agree to the point that online education is uh, not good for the students i would like to uh, i would agree to it only if you prove my points wrong uh, that that will be it thank you thank you jasindi with this we come to the conclusion of our uh, debate but we um, we have so much to uh, we have some few more things to go i would result declaration will be there but meanwhile i want to give this time for all our respected panel judges uh, to take their time uh, to give remarks if they have any Okay, hi everyone. Let me just set up my audio. Okay, uh thank you to the Oratory Club for organizing this. I guess I'll take the first um uh, I'll take time first before the other judges. Um it's been a pleasure listening to your arguments and debating online, which is I think quite a different kind of experience compared to the face-to-face -face debates. Um the fact that you've attempted this and all of you have chosen to participate uh it's really encouraging for us to see students coming online and also a good number of attendees we have around 39 people online um so congratulations to the oratory club for organizing this and also to all the participants for being a part of the debate and uh, giving your best i think all of you have done a good job and i was really happy to see that we also had a first semester student participating with us uh bendang jungla uh from the psychology department uh, so so thank you for participating uh for the first time uh in a college debate uh, here so welcome to the tito family and i think you've made your debut today So uh let me just give my overall a uh, very in very brief assessment. I'm not going to go too much into the details but uh, I think we've been having debates for a long time now in Tetsuo College and each one of you I think uh those who have debated today I've seen you guys debating before as well and I think you guys are improving uh with every competition that's being organized. 
Um, I like the fact that uh, a lot of examples and facts were thrown up, were thrown out this morning. Um, and when, so when using this, and I saw that many of you did support it with the source from where you receive the facts. Some of you did not mention those. So I just want to point out here that when using examples or facts, you know, it's important to cite the source from where you received that your data. Um, otherwise, it will just appear as numbers thrown out or created by the individual. Okay, and I like the fact that one of the debaters, I think it was Divikat, also used uh, brought in facts covering the whole of Northeast and not just Nagaland. So, uh, because the debate topic, it's inclusive of the whole world and not just Nagaland. So it extended beyond that. That was good. I, I was glad to see the examples used from uh, from different states also. Um, there was a little bit of confusion at one point, I think, on what is online education. And I think that was pointed out by one of the debaters, Matsu also, against his opponent. Um, so I think it's important to establish those facts before you know, so that there's a clear differentiation between YouTube, WhatsApp, or, or Google Classroom, Zoom, like that, that's important before you we get into a debate. So keep that in mind. Um, and also lastly, I think when it comes to personal opinions, I think a lot of personal opinions were also shared. The thing is that when you give, when debaters use personal opinions as a point of argument, it becomes very debatable. So when you say that it's selfish or it's uh, online education is about personal achievements, please back it up with facts on why is it termed as selfish? Why is it only, uh, why is online education only seen as a personal achievement for that matter? So even if you're, you, you can cite your personal opinions, but since it's always debatable, you have to supplement it with facts or data to prove that it's selfish or it has personal achievement. Those are just examples to connect with the arguments that were thrown out. Okay, so that is about it. Now, overall, I just wanted to, um, uh, mention a bit about why this debate has been organized. I think by the Oratory Club, they have their reasons for choosing a topic like this. At the same time, I think it's important for us to establish as an institution here and on giving our students a platform to debate on this topic, uh, which is very relevant right now. And it is true, very debatable. And there are lots of pros and cons, and we have heard so many views on this. Now what I want to throw out to the Tutsil community as, as a challenge is, what can we do, having heard all the pros and cons, what can we do as a community to alleviate the challenges uh, for those students, those families who do not have the same means as others? Because sadly, we know the world is not equal. There is a huge divide, and that was spelled out clearly by one of the creators in Hyrisa. It's not equal. So what can we do as a community to reduce the social stigma or the social pressure even to have fancy phones or to compete with luxuries, which some would, some would feel are luxuries, some would feel are, again, this is debatable, basic necessities. So I want to leave you all with the last question. Do you think online education has become a basic necessity or is it still termed as a luxury? If you ask that question, I think that will provide us some answers on the way that different people perceive the importance of online education or the unimportance of online education. When I say basic necessity, we are now at a stage where we have to ask ourselves an important question. What is a basic necessity in a state? Um, earlier, we would say basic necessity, necessities range from electricity, right, good roads, um, an education system, right to education, these are all the basics. Now, in modern times, as the world has changed and with this COVID pandemic, what becomes a basic necessity, I think, is something that we can think about for ourselves when we, when we look at what's, what's necessary and what can be termed as luxuries. Okay, so um, I'm just throwing this out food for thought for everyone who's attending this debate. Thank you once again for giving me this time. And also congratulations once again to the LED Club and all the participants. I'm very proud of uh, all of your performances this morning. Okay.
Um, well, I think I was, uh, our vice principal has covered all the areas that I wanted to point out as well. I, I don't want to repeat it, but there is always room for improvement. And although all of you have done really well, I think there are areas, as our vice principal has pointed out, which we can all um, work to uh, improving in the next event, uh, whenever that happens. Um, in any case, there's events like this and activities like this, such as a debate competition, allows you to get a sense of uh, your peers or your opponent's point of view, but also presentation styles, which we can all learn from one another. So this is a, um, I think I just want to say, you know, give my congratulations to the Oratory Club for making this possible. Um, and also to all the participants who have been keenly and actively uh, presenting your views, please do, do continue to be part of these events and all the best to all of you. Thank you. Yeah, good morning. I'd like to congratulate the Oratory Club as well as all the participants for this wonderful debate. Um, our VP and Dean has already mentioned, uh, I think, almost everything that wanted to say also. Uh, there's just one thing that I feel that um, we can work on to, you know, to make uh, the debate more interesting later, um, in the, uh, like the next time when we have the debate. Uh, that is that, uh, the rebuttal session. Now, one thing that I noticed uh, was that many of the participants had just, uh, you know, worked on the the, what, the points that you have prepared. Um, it will be good you know, in the next debate if you can um, carry on with the points that your, the previous speaker has uh, you know, expressed and then you can work on those points and um, you know, add more to those points for the, uh, like what, whether you're for against or for the motion. And um, it'll be it'll be more interesting if you can carry on with uh, with some interesting um, topics that the previous speakers have uh, pointed out. So uh, uh, now I, I'm saying this because what I noticed was that most of you had just um, prepared ahead in advance your points, and you were just reading those out or just saying it out. You know, so um, instead of uh, working on the uh, previous points that have already been uh, pointed out, so I think that that is something that you can work on. Otherwise, it has been a really interesting debate, and um, I believe the Oratory Club can come up with more interesting debates like this. So, congratulations again. Thank you all the judges for your uh, meaningful suggestions and uh, instructions. Um, I, I'm sure they would, they would work on it uh, for a future um, debate that will come. Um, now I give this time to Ms. Nisha for, uh, I give this time to Sir Anjan for um, result declaration. Sir, you may take your time. All right, I do hope that uh, you're able to hear me uh, clearly. If you're not, please let me know. All right, so uh, congratulations to the Oratory Club for organizing this. Uh, it's interesting to watch an online online uh, online debate, uh, which for me also is a first experience. I had never witnessed an online de debate before. So good job on that. And also at the same time, I would like to congratulate all the participants for taking uh, for you know having uh, having having taken part here uh, but it's time to declare the results now uh, please understand that it's not winning that matters but 
participation and also uh, going on this journey of self of you know learning more uh, all right so here are the the results of the first virtual debate competition 2020 organized by the auditory club at third position at third place we have Ning Tao Lung Gang Mei of BBA fourth semester all right third place Ning Tao Lung Gang Gang Mei, BBA fourth semester. Thank you, sir. At second place, in second, we have Matsu Hamso, MA English second semester. All right, second place, Matsu Hamso, MA English second semester. Congratulations. And now it's a time to declare the name of the winner of this online debate. The winner is. I hope you're guessing wherever you are, all right? The winner of this debate, first place goes to S, uh, I'm sorry, Harris Sanap, Economics, BA fourth semester, okay? BA fourth semester, Economics honors, uh, honors, Harris Sanap. Congratulations to all the winners. Thank you so much, sir, for the declaration of the result. With this, we have not come to an end, but uh, we want to take a little time of yours again. Um, we would be uh, so um, indebted if we don't declare this. We are really grateful to all the um, uh, participants, and uh, you are equally a winner <laughs> along with those winners. So you all are winners. Participation is a great deal, and you have that courage to participate, and thank you so much. Uh, and I congratulate to all the winners. Uh, same goes to all the participants. And with this, I come to the panel judges. Uh, um, we are so grateful for taking your time out. I know you have your schedules and tight schedules with it, but how we are grateful we auditory club are would ever be grateful to your time given to us and that you have made this debate a success and a meaningful one. And so we, we really thank you for that. And we uh, once again take this time to thank Sir Anjan. Uh, we really thank you because you have been with us uh, through, through thick and thin uh, of our preparation and our developments from the beginning. It's now uh, it's now one one month and three days of coming into this conclusion of the you know implementation of the events. So we we would ever be grateful to all of you, to all the participants, and to all the attendees, everyone who make this program a success. So with this, I hand over the time to Miss Nisha for the concluding remark. Thank you, Miss Bibi, and uh, thank you everyone who has joined us today. And since it was our first time organizing this virtual debate, online debate. So uh, many things went wrong, many things out of the track. And then like question answer round, I mean, we had to make, we had to make certain changes, but we really hope that next time when we are organizing an event, for sure we'll try our best to make it better than today. And uh, apologizing for all the uh, things that that uh, went wrong, but uh, congratulations to all the participants, all the winners, and uh, sincerely thanking our honorable judges, and then Sir Anjan, and thank you. Have a, have a very nice day. Have a good day. Thank you. Everyone stay safe and stay healthy.